called a table saw or circular saw. It's an extremely important uh, item in woodworking. It is a saw that is uh, used to cut straight lines. Sometimes the beginning woodworker will tend to uh, try to cut a lot of straight lines with a bandsaw. And in most cases, that's not going to give you a very accurate, accurate cut. If you're trying to make something like furniture, small cabinet, uh, coffee table, uh, something like that, the bandsaw probably cannot be used. You have to use something like this with the table saw, the circular saw. We have here a blade. Of course, this part here is the guard. We have a blade in here. Uh, this particular blade is called a combination blade. Now, blades uh, would normally come in three styles. One would be a rip saw blade, which saws with the grain. The second type, the second type of blade would be a cross cut blade, which cuts across the grain of the wood. Cross is this way, but with the grain is the long way of uh, following the grain of the wood. And the third kind of blade is combination. Combination can do either one. Now there's reasons why you might use a combination blade, there's other reasons why you might want to use a brick blade or a uh, cross-cutting blade. Normally on, on this particular saw, uh, most of the time you're going to find a combination blade. These teeth in here uh, have a certain bend to them. There's little pieces on the end which aren't going to show up too much on the video are pieces of carbide. Now, first thing I'm going to do is get ready to saw a cross cut. 
my miter gauge out. ready to do our, our cross cut here. Uh, the table saw can be, a, a, again, a very, very useful item. You do have to be particularly careful of kickback. Uh, and, and if you misuse a saw, if you have an accident on it, it can be uh, kind of on the negative side. Kickback is when the wood comes flying back. And it will normally happen uh, on this side of the blade uh, for the piece of wood that you're cutting off. Uh, what happens probably more often with uh, ripping than cross-cutting. Now this particular guard here has uh, in the back here uh, an anti-kickback device with one of these on both sides of what's called the splitter here. And these are called kickback or dogs. And kind of dig into the wood so if the wood tries to come back, it's going to stop it. And this particular guard may look fairly simple, but it actually is a, is a very safe guard to use. Part here is a splitter because one part of our saw and wood goes on one side and the other part on the other side. Now when we get ready for this, we need to check and make sure that there is nobody behind us. And that can be a little difficult in a shop, uh, but you need to check. And if there is somebody standing behind you, you want to caution them to move. The other thing too is you try not to stand between your saw blade and fence area where there might possibly be kickback. Uh, kickback happens very rarely but we just try to avoid that area. Another thing too is that we really need a face shield. Uh, it's gonna be awkward for me to wear it during the video and for you to hear me, but there is a fair amount of, of uh, stuff thrown in the air with chips, and we do need that face shield on. So I'm gonna put the face shield on, I'm gonna cut it, I'll keep my fingers back four inches. Uh, there'll be a fair amount of noise when the noise is when the machine is uh, turned off and it quiets down, then we'll talk about what happened. Now, when I turn that machine off, the blade is going to coast for a while. I do not remove this piece of wood until the blade is done coasting. Uh, for one thing, if I reached in there, I'd be closer than four inches. So we wait until everything stops. If this was my cutoff wood, then we dispose of it. And normally, disposing is not thrown on the floor. Uh, we probably have some place where you're supposed to put short stock. You have to remember that just because you're not going to use a piece of wood like this doesn't necessarily mean that it's aimed for the garbage can probably would put it in your short stock area, your cutoff box, or whatever your, your teacher has you do it. That is called cross-cutting, because I went across the grain. The next operation we're going to do is going to be ripping, and we go with the grain. cases in a shop here, uh, most of our wood is going to be uh, probably, by the time we get done cutting it, under four inches. So we're going to have to use something called a push stick, because again, we don't want our fingers closer than four inches. So I'll use a push stick and push my wood in with this, and then push through when we're done. So the face shield goes on. stick like this, we probably would have to make up a, a new one every uh, 
two or three months because they do get cut up. And of course, it's, it's much better to, to uh, get these caught from tablecloth, blade, uh, than of course your fingers. If you, we do two main operations with the table saw like this. We do cross cutting, where we're going to actually cross the grain. I think this piece of wood here shows the grain fairly well. These are these lines running here. The grain is, if you look at this under a microscope, is uh, little pieces like a piece of rope going that way. And when we go across it, and we're cross cutting, and when we go with it, we are ripping. We use a face shield, and we do need that. When we make our cuts, we try to check and make sure nobody is behind us. Down here, when I was reaching down here, it wasn't showing up too well, but there is an on-off switch. Uh, with the saw. This is our fence. We use that only for ripping. And this is our miter gauge here. And we use this only for, uh, or for cross cutting. Now we're going to go on to a couple of other operations. Now sometimes we need to change the blade. Either we, on the saw like this, we need to put a different blade on or sometimes we need to put a dado head on. A uh, dado head is a device that replaces the saw blade and it cuts grooves. Uh, this particular one here is a variable dado. Uh, some dados are just a series of saw blades that, that go together. This one, you cannot see it, but it has numbers here and it'll, it'll cut up to about 13 sixteenths wide. Uh, we use dados a lot in furniture construction. Now, if we have to replace the blade or put the dado on, need to do a couple of things. One is to turn the machine power off. I'm not talking just about our little off and on and off button box here in the front. We go to the back of the side of the machine and find where the uh, other switches are. And they're usually down by the base and we turn those off. Okay, we make sure those are off with anything because we don't want somebody to come up here and accidentally hit the button and have the machine come on. So we turn those off and then I'm going to have to take back it off a little bit and this is our throat uh, blade or plate that comes up and uh, exposes the saw blade and I need a, a block of wood here to uh, block the blade That's, it's hard to see but there is a nut in there and it's a left-handed thread normal threads. And there is the nut. There's a washer. Here is our blade. And then we can put our different blade on, another blade, or put our dado head on. And when we get done, then we need to go back to whatever was supposed to be on here. When we put the blade on, it's just the reverse. We put our, our teeth here and Remember, this, these teeth have to be coming at you. If you put it on like this, I don't know what it's going to show up, but that's backwards. And you don't cut very wood very successfully. It's kind of dangerous, too. So we put it on the correct direction with the teeth coming at us. Put it down the arbor. Put this washer back on. And then put the threads back on. And since it's a backwards or left handed thread, it goes differently. Then again, I will use this cord to kind of break or lodge against the saw blade so I can take and tighten my nut back on. And we don't have to tighten this with a lot of strength. You, you certainly want to tight down there, but it doesn't take a, a super amount of strength to get it very tight. And then we can take and put our back in. And I might add that if we had put the dado head on here, we would use a, a different plate. We use a plate probably like this one, which is a, a wider hole, which allows the, the data to come up on. And then, of course, we take and put the guard back. Basically, there are very few, if any, operations that you can do without a guard. And uh, the missing guard on a table saw, the last information we had from the State Safety Board was uh, the safety inspector came in and the guard was missing, you're subject to at least a $600 fine. Now there are some cases when we cut dados and stuff where this guard will probably not work, but we have another, usually another guard, a brick guard or something similar that we can take and put on the saw. 
We're not going to go into that now because in middle school, very few of us do data cuts uh, for our projects. Um, but if you get into that, then of course you see your teacher about that. Earlier in the videotape, I talked a little bit about duplicating short lengths. That is the one time when you use the miter gauge and the fence together. To do that, uh, again, we would not normally do this very often, but it is important to go over the concept of it. We take some kind of block of wood and we take and Well, first of all, we take and find a clamp that's going to fit, so I'll be right back. A clamp, I think, is going to work this time. Uh, we take and clamp this wood down and clamp it securely to the fence. Now, what that does is if we wanted to cut the wood the same length in here, I can use my miter, miter gauge and I run it up against this stock here, run it up against the stock and I can cut it. Now, because this wood is 3 4 inch thick here, there's a minimum 3 4 inch clearance and it's perfectly safe and, and the correct way to do it. Run it, cut it, uh, run it up again and cut it. This is only for duplicating short lengths and you notice that the length of this what's called a stop block, stops well before the blade. Wouldn't do any good uh, to take and had a piece of the wood ran up to where the blade is, then it wouldn't be safe because we wouldn't have any clearance. But this is the one time we can use these two together. So in closing, a table saw is extremely useful. It is about the only thing we have for cutting any, any true straight edges. A uh, table saw is also about as good as the operator, and uh, just because it's a power saw doesn't mean that you can't make mistakes and that you can't cut crooked. When you're uh, cross-cutting here, you of course want to hold on to your wood very good. It is possible if you aren't holding very tight in here that when you go through, you cut a little bit crooked. Uh, so it's not a, a goof-proof machine. You want to, of course, keep your fingers back four inches. You need to check to make sure nobody's behind you, behind the saw for, for kickback. And in most cases with a machine like this, when you use it, you have to ask your teacher each time, each and every time. Now that means if you use it and you shut it off and you go over to the bench and, and measure something or get something else, then you need to again ask the teacher before you use it again. So enjoy.